I, I need to go stay with her. I said, look at, I'm scratching his dignity. So I told him, listen, no, 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 no. I want you to come and you can pay. You can pay money and stay with us. He said, how much? I said, $15 a week. Which in America is like nothing. $15 is nothing. I said, and then he kind of hesitated. I said, and we'll pay for all the food. Well, you eat $15 worth of food in one day in America. He said, okay, all right. And I told my dad later, I said, see how I did that? Because now he'll stay with us. He knows he's getting a good deal on the food. And I was making it all about money. Well, I didn't know he wanted to come and stay with us. He wanted to learn about how are Americans and how is the Dawa going to be. What do we believe? Especially people who are preaching. So he came and stayed in our house. And I said, well, now that's good. I'll travel with him and go with him in places and he'll see and he'll learn about Christianity. As we were traveling and working together, we put up tables just like this and booths and things and set things out for people to come and look at them and sell things. And I caught him one time. He, when somebody wanted to take something from the front, he took it from the back and gave it to him. And I looked at him. And the next time somebody started to take something, he took from the back and gave it to him. I said, hey, Mohammed, we take the stuff from the front because that's the old stuff. The new stuff in the back, just hold it back. You know what I'm saying? This is dated material. Get rid of the junk first. He said, no, I can't. In my religion, we can't sell something unless we give the people the best. I said, mm, got me on that one. And I'm supposed to be telling him about a better deal. I said, okay, okay, yeah, whatever. You're never going to make any money, though. But that's all right. Over a period of time, I came to learn a lot of things. Also about being humble. A lot. Because this man was obviously well-educated, very articulate. He could really talk about a lot of subjects. In fact, I tried to debate with him about many things. But he was so wise and well-educated that he could see what I was doing and he would take it easy and let me win every debate. I could win any debate with him if, if he wanted me to. But if he wanted me to lose, I was going to lose. It was, this was how well he could handle it. Now what happened, one of the preachers that I knew, another preacher, who used to carry a big cross and walk down the street so people would stop and talk to him about religion, he had a heart attack and he went to the hospital. So I went to the hospital to visit him. And when I was visiting him, I met another man in the hospital who was in a wheelchair. This gentleman had a problem. He didn't want to talk to anybody. And I told him, let, let me witness to you. Let me share the message of Jesus with you. So I took out my Bible. And again, I start telling him about a prophet, Prophet Yunus, alayhi salam. And I'm telling them, look at Jonah. He's in the belly of the whale. He's in the sea. He's down there like this. And who knows how long. And suffering like this, you don't have as big a problem as that. And God saved him so he could save you too. He said, hmm, didn't want to talk to me. I asked him, what's your name? He don't want to tell me. Where are you from? He said, I'm from Venus. So what's that? Well, we do have, there is a Venus, Texas, by the way. But he said, you know, he's from another planet. So I kept, each time I would go, I would talk to him, witness to him. Finally, one day, he started crying. I was pushing his wheelchair around. I took him down, I rolled him around different places. He started crying one day. He said, I'm going to confess something to you. I need to confess something to you. Now, to a Catholic, confession means you're going to tell the priest all your sins. And then he's going to forgive you. Well, I wasn't Catholic. And I told him, listen, I'm not Catholic and I'm not a priest. I'm a preacher. He said, I know better than you do. I am a priest. I said, oh my God. This man is a priest. And he knows the Bible better than I do. He said, I just have had a hard time. I've been here and having heart attacks and I've been having problems and everything and trying to figure out a lot of things. He said, I'm sorry I took it out on you. I really am. I apologize. And he started crying. And when he started crying, I felt sorry. You know, I hugged him and I said, it's okay. One day I went to the hospital and my friend was gone. So I started visiting with the priest. 
And it happened one time I went to visit him at the hospital and he was gone. And I asked him, where did he go? They said he went home. I said, home? He's a missionary priest from South America. How did he go home? She said, I don't know. He's not here. I'm sure his family. I said, he has no family. I know him personally. He has no family. Where did he go? She said, I don't know. We're not responsible for them. I said, well, let me see where he went. You got it in your file? She said, I can't do that. Those are locked up. Nobody can look in the file. And I got in the lady's face and I said, listen to me. This man could die in the street right now and it's going to be your fault. And you're going to get sued because I'm going to sue you for him. She said, okay, his folder's over there, but I'm not going to watch. I went over and I looked for it, got the address where he went. Sure enough, he was in a place where they put people that have no place to go, a shelter. So I went to the shelter and I found him. He was still on crutches. He saw me, he started crying again. He said, please get me out of here, get me out of here. I said, okay, come live at my house. Now, I told you the story so you can see something. Now look, I have two visitors in my house. Huh? One is a Catholic priest. The other is a Muslim. And I'm thinking I can get the Catholic priest and convert him to be a Protestant. At the same time, I'm going to catch the Muslim and bring him over to Christianity. Uh, high aspirations. But it didn't work. Some strange things began to happen. We would sit around the table at night to discuss what is the Bible and what's the salvation. My father has a Bible. It's called King James Version of the Bible. Most of you probably heard about it. Especially any students of Abhmedidat or Zachary Nike, you've heard about King James Version of the Bible. But I work out of a different one that I've had since 1953. It's called the Revised Standard Version. And it says in it, King James Version has grave mistakes, grave errors, defects in it. It's what it says. So I begin to preach out of mine, which doesn't match. And my father said, no, it's this way. I said, no, it's this way. Now, my wife comes up with her Bible from Jimmy Swagger. It's called The Good News for Modern Man. Okay? Totally different. It's written in modern vernacular. You can just, you know, say anything you want to with it. You don't even recognize the Bible anymore. The Catholic priest, he's got another Bible. An older Bible. With 73 books, we're working out of 66 books. And his is not even the same in the verses. It doesn't match up at all. And I never even knew about this subject until then. And he's saying this, and I'm saying that. My father's saying something else. My wife's on something else. And all the time, Muhammad the Muslim is sitting over there like this. So we ask him. I guess it was me asking him. I said, well, how many versions of your book, your Koran, do you have? He said, the Quran has no versions. There's only one. It's original. It's in the Arabic language. This is the book that has no doubt. Who do the Muttaqeen? It's guidance for those who have taqwa for Allah. As Sheikh Muhammad Jabali was just telling you about this shield or taqwa that you have to have between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only certain people are going to get the huda, hidayah, dina, from this Quran. These people that have the taqwa. So when he's telling us that the Quran is one, I'm going, huh? And it's in the original language, we still have it. You know what I was thinking? He's lying. I was sure he was lying because he could see the problem we were having and he just sat back and made that up. But I don't know Arabic at that stage, so I don't know what to say. You know, maybe, I don't know. And he left it at that. He didn't try to preach. But it put a big doubt in my mind now about we got all these books. He's got one. And La Rebifi, no doubt in it. Mm. So another time we had another discussion that came up. Now this time I went to the other preacher who had the cross. And I was asking him, I want to be able to explain the Trinity. He said, you know the Trinity. I said, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And I know the council of Nicaea when we had that. But I want to know the way to explain it so a human being can just understand it. He said, okay. It's like an apple. Just take an apple. The apple has a shell around the outside, the, the skin. Inside is the meat. Inside of that is the seeds. Okay? Three things, one apple. That's the way. 
I start going back. I'm going to tell this Muslim about the Trinity. But on the way, I remember his arguing with me, his way of debating with me. I said, no, he's going to tear me apart. As soon as I say seeds, he's going to say there's more than one. So it could be seven or eight or nine or ten gods all rolled into one. No, no, no. It's got to be special. It doesn't work like that. Let me go back and try again. So I went back to him. I said, what if he says there's more than one seed in there? He said, okay. I said, and besides, it could have a worm running through it. Then that would make it go up another notch. What can I do about that? He said, okay, okay, forget the apple. I said, okay. It's like the babe, the egg. Use the egg. The egg has the shell. Inside of the egg is the white. Inside of the white is the yellow. Three, one egg. That's it. That, that, that's good to go. Now I start going home again and it hit me. Wait a minute. The egg could have a double yolk. God becomes four just like that. Plus it could be rotten. I'm not going to ask him again. So at the market one day, I saw a man and I was talking to him because I was listening to some things that Muhammad had told us about the belief in Islam, Allah is one. And so I was telling this guy, you know, I got some doubts about the Trinity. He said, you a preacher, you have doubts? I said, yeah, I, 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 it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. How could three be one? He said, okay, okay, look. You see me? I'm one man. I said, yeah. He said, my wife? Yeah, it's one person. Yeah. See my son? Yeah. Three. One. One family. It's the family of God. Use that. I said, there you go. The family of God. You don't get very far on that one and you realize right away they could have another kid just like that. But worse, they could get a divorce. You want a God that can get a divorce? Huh? In Texas, if you get a divorce, your wife gets the car. Cars house, your retirement check, your 501, your Keo plan. He's, she's going to get your computer and even your email. You got nothing left. And I don't want a God that could have a worm in it. I don't want a God that can be rotten. And I don't want a God that can get a divorce. I want to explain this Trinity the right way. Sure enough, the subject came up, Trinity. There we are. Now, here's the priest trying to talk about the Trinity is like an apple. I'm going, you don't go there. And then he's an egg. Don't worry about it. The family of God, forget about it. I know what's going to happen. So we ask Muhammad, we say, okay, what do you say about God? What do you think he said? A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim bismillahi rahman rahim Qul hu Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakuluhu kufu wanahad. And he explained it something like this. Say he is Allah, the unique, not like anything else. He's eternally sought after by his whole creation, but, but he doesn't need the creation. He's not the father of anything, he's not the son of anything, he's not like anything, and he is unique. Ahad. I said, boy, that's exactly what I already think, but I can't admit that. That sounds too easy. Uh. But plus in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to tell the Christians, don't say three. Here's a little point. I'm going to go out of the story for a minute to show you something. Nowhere in the Old Testament, the Torah, or the Zabur, the Psalms, or the Injil, which is the New Testament. Nowhere in the Bible do you find the word Trinity. Not once. Not once is the word Trinity. But it's in the Quran. We have it in the Quran. It says, 